In the summer of 1914, the German High Command ordered a full frontal assault on Ozowek Fortress located in northeastern Poland. Germany had long considered Russia a threat to their rising power. The massive and imposing fortress became a painful thorn in the side of the Germans as they tried to advance into Russian territory. The German forces had tried and failed three times to take the fortress, but the fourth time would be different. The Germans had with them 14 battalions of infantry, sappers, massive siege guns, and artillery. They also brought with them a new and nightmarish weapon that they believed would help them achieve a swift victory, chlorine gas. On the other hand, the Russians only had a few thousand men defending the fort. Half of them were poorly equipped and poorly trained militiamen. On August 5, 1914, a dark cloud of chlorine gas began slowly creeping towards the Russian positions near the front of the fortress. The chlorine gas caused a panic amidst the Russian defenders who had very little to no protection from it. When the Germans strolled through no man's land and to the Russian positions, they expected to see their enemy in their death throes, but instead what they encountered was horrifying, to say the least. Instead of surrendering, the Russians launched a counterattack. One hundred Russian soldiers barely clinging to life charged at 7,000 Germans with bayonets. The Germans fled in terror from the melted-faced, zombie-like men who were attacking them without mercy. The tale of the Russian soldiers who fought for their country despite being outnumbered and in great pain is a reminder as to why chemical warfare is banned around the world. The Ozowek Fortress When we think of World War I, we often think of the maze of muddy and blood-soaked trenches that zigzagged across the Western Front. But the most brutal fighting of the conflict occurred on the lesser-known Eastern Front between Russia and Germany. Built in the late 19th century by the Russian Romanov dynasty, the Ozowek Fortress, located in what is now northeastern Poland, was constructed as a defensive position between the borders of Russia and Germany. The fortress was constantly updated by the Russians to deal with advances in siege gunnery. The destruction of the fortress was critical for the Germans who saw Russia as a threat to their own rising power. The fortress hindered their advances into Russian territory and dragged capable and experienced soldiers into a stalemate instead of engaging on active battlefields. The fortress was protected by intricate layers of protection. In the vicinity of the structure, two defensive lines could stop an attacking enemy force before they even came close. The first line of defense an enemy would encounter consisted of a shallow trench network and barbed wire. The second line of defense consisted of deeper trenches, more barbed wire, and machine gun nests. If an attacking enemy force somehow managed to make it past these first two layers of defense, they would then face massive stone walls and battlements protecting the fortress. The enemy force would become an easy target for the defending Russian soldiers who could easily pick them off with rifle and machine gun fire. If an enemy force actually made it inside Ozowek Fortress, the Russians would engage them in coarse quarters combat. Because of this layer defense system, only a few Russian soldiers were necessary inside the fort. The attacks. The Ozowek Fortress was the target of several attacks from the Germans during the early stages of World War I, while it was being defended by its Russian garrison. The first assault took place in September of 1914 as the German 9th Army hit the area with no less than 40 infantry battalions, which numbered around 10,000 men, outnumbering the Russian defenders 10 to 1. A attack ensued but the Germans were repelled by the Russian artillery. Unwilling to call it quits, the Germans tried for another frontal assault in February of 1915. They outnumbered the Russians once again, and the brutal fighting lasted a week, and the Germans were able to break through the first two lines of defenses. The Russians had no choice but to fall back, as 
the defense systems, the second line then came under attack. But the Germans withdrew after a couple of days. On February 13th, the Germans returned with their newest heavy artillery and attacked the fortress without mercy. According to witnesses, 360 artillery shells hit the fortress every four to five minutes for an entire week. When the bombardment ended, more than a quarter of a million shells from the German artillery had been used against the fortress. The Russians suffered heavy losses from artillery and plenty of the buildings inside the fortress had been destroyed and yet the German forces still could not break through the fortress. It was almost as if breaking to the Oswek fortress was impossible. Little did the Russian defenders know that the fortress's most glorious hours were yet to come. A new weapon. In the middle of the summer of 1915, the Germans were planning another attack on the Oswek fortress. And although they had 14 battalions of, of infantry, they were planning on introducing a new battlefield technique, chemical warfare. The German commanders, including a field marshal, Paul von Hindenburg, were aware that the gas masks that were used by the Russians were very primitive and would not hold up well against more acidic gassets. Field Marshal von Hindenburg ordered several gas batteries, which brought with them several thousand cylinders of chlorine gas. Chlorine gas is extremely nasty and dangerous. It irritates the eyes and the throat, and if it touches water, like the fluid in the lungs, it turns into hydrochloric acid, a acid so strong that it can dissolve flesh. The best way to survive a chlorine attack is to flush the gas out of your system. As the Germans prepared for the upcoming assault, they waited for the perfect weather to launch their newest weapon on the 500 Russian soldiers and the 400 militiamen who were defending the Oswek fortress. Finally, on the afternoon of August 6, 1915, the Germans launched 30 canisters worth of chlorine gas at the fortress. The Attack of the Dead Man. An academic article titled The Attack of the Dead Man, panned by a man named Trukaskov from the Sochi State University, detailed the spread of the deadly fog, stating, At four o'clock in the afternoon, the Germans brought down artillery fire on all of their targets and at the same time fired the gases. The dark green cloud of chlorine gas moved towards the Russian positions and within five to ten minutes completely enveloped them. The massive glass cloud reached eight miles wide and twenty miles long. They were... All who were alive were killed in this death zone. The leaves on the trees withered up and fell to the ground. The grass turned black. A deep layer of chlorine oxide settled on everything that was made of bronze or brass. All the men who were outside of the Oswick Fortress perished immediately as the gas was inhaled and destroyed their lungs. The Russian forces watched helplessly in horror as their comrades in the first defensive line succumbed to the gas. They struggled to place their rudimentary gas mask onto their faces and panic ensued. There was nothing that they could do to protect themselves from this new and deadly weapon. The deadly gas continued to spread into the fortress. Thankfully, the soldiers inside the fortress received a less lethal dose of the gas as opposed to their comrades outside of the fortress, taking them longer to perish. The Russian defenders were beginning to struggle to breathe, and the Germans donned on their own gas masks and assaulted the fortress. While this was happening, over 100 wounded Russian soldiers, led by Sub-Lieutenant Vladimir Karpovic Kotolinsky, quickly planned a counterattack. If they were to die, they would die with their hands around the throats of their enemies. When the Germans made it over the defensive barrier and began to march towards the inner fortifications, they were met by a gruesome sight that would haunt their dreams forever. Although outnumbered by the Germans, the Russians, many of them who had blood-soaked rags over their mouths and others coughing up a storm, charged at the Germans with their bayonets screaming at the top of what remained of their lungs. 
The Germans attempted to shoot at the zombie-looking men, but the Russians, enraged at what the Germans had done to them, attacked them with such ferocity that nothing could stop them, not even their own deaths. Startled by the attack's unexpectedness, terrified of the gory spectacle, and impressed by the Russians' willingness to fight back, the German forces retreated from the fortress. The German regiments ran back to their lines as fast as they, they could. They were so terrified that many of them dropped their rifles and machine guns as they fled. Many of the fleeing Germans even became entangled into the barbed wire that surrounded the Russians' defensive trenches. By 11 o'clock, the nightmare was over. Thanks to the actions of Kordolinsky, two more battalions were able to seize control of the fortress before the Germans could regroup and take the fort again. The dead men surrender. Lieutenant Kotlitsky and many other soldiers tragically succumbed to their wounds. The Oswek fortress continued to serve as a defensive position for a few more days until August 22, 1915, when the Russians defending the fort surrendered peacefully to the Germans, but not before demolishing its main walls and fortified points. The Russian defenders held on long enough for the rest of the Russian forces in the area to regroup with another defensive plan. The Germans were finally able to break through the fortress and advance into Russian territory. The horrific battles, such as the attack of the dead men, led to 38 countries to sign the Geneva Protocol in 1925, which forbids the use of chemical weapons in war. Since then, an additional 125 countries have also signed the treaty.